everyone! Over the next few videos, we'll be looking at ecosystems. In this video, we'll talk about abiotic and biotic factors with some examples. Then, we'll go on to the definitions we use for various parts of an ecosystem. Let's get going! In ecology, we study the relationship between an organism and its environment. An organism's environment is made up of two types of factors, biotic factors and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are living factors, so this includes things like predation and competition. Abiotic factors are non-living factors, so these include things like light and temperature. An ecosystem is the combination of all the biotic and abiotic factors in a particular area. This description might sound a little abstract and a little vague, but it means that ecosystems can be all kinds of sizes. They can be as small as a single tree, a garden pond or a rock pool. Or they can be as large as the Sahara Desert or the Great Barrier Reef. Now, whatever the size of the ecosystem, there are lots of substructures within it. And we need to know the terms for them. The first term that we have is habitat. A habitat is a place where an organism normally lives. In one ecosystem, there might be many habitats. Let's use the example of a pond ecosystem. The open water may be one habitat, say for pond skaters. Another habitat might be amongst the reeds, say for certain types of fish. And the sediment and sand at the bottom can form a third habitat, say for worms and other invertebrates. The next term you need to know is population. A population is defined as all of the organisms of one species in a particular habitat. So naturally, they should be able to interbreed to produce fertile offspring. For example, all the individuals of a specific species of goldfish in our pond form a population. The term community defines all of the populations of different species living in the same place at the same time. The word place in our definition is quite a loose term because it could apply to all of the organisms that live in an ecosystem like the pond but it could also apply to all the populations of organisms that live in the sediment of the pond, or in the reeds of the pond. Basically, we need to specify the specific habitat, or habitats, that we're referring to when we talk about the community in an ecosystem. As such, communities can be all different sizes. Another term you need to know is ecological niche. A niche describes the role of an organism in its environment. The ecological niche includes how the organism obtains energy, how it interacts with other species, and how it interacts with its physical environment. I want to flag that a niche isn't a physical place. It's a conceptual term for a role an organism plays. And finally, the definition of an ecosystem is a combination of all the biotic and abiotic factors in a particular area. So that includes the community of organisms living there and all the non-living components of its environment. Now, the biotic and abiotic factors of an ecosystem all interact with each other. And these interactions mean that the ecosystem is always changing. Because of this, ecosystems are said to be dynamic systems. Let's look at our pond example. The temperature, soil salinity and light exposure are all abiotic factors in a pond. They may influence the survival of a particular water plant. This plant could act as a habitat for young fish and as a food source for a snail. If the water plant grows, it will block out light. This then leaves lower light intensity for the organisms beneath it. The point is that all of the biotic and abiotic factors depend on each other for the ecosystem to function. Another key feature of an ecosystem is that it's pretty self-contained. This means that there's very little energy or matter flowing in or out of it. In particular, an ecosystem doesn't need any external energy source. It's self-supporting in terms of energy flow. This is because the ecosystem functions thanks to the work of its own photosynthesizing plants and algae. These organisms convert light energy to chemical energy for the rest of the ecosystem to use. Now, in reality, no ecosystem is entirely self-contained. There's bound to be energy and matter flowing in and out. For example, birds often migrate from one ecosystem to another. 
birds can obtain energy through feeding in one ecosystem before nesting and raising young in another. All that said, the most important thing to remember about ecosystems is that they're the interaction of all the abiotic and biotic factors in that area. The different substructures of an ecosystem are pretty similar to a stereotypical American high school. You know, like the ones you see in all those movies. See, in the movies, we're always told that high school is a really clicky environment. We're told you have the jocks in one group, the clever people in another, and the pretty ones in another all together. And these different social groups are a bit like different populations of the high school ecosystem. Now the classrooms, the canteen and the sports pitch all act as different habitats. In the classroom, you have a community of different populations all occupying the same habitat. And to round it all off, the different social groupings occupy their own niche. For example, the jocks are predominantly found on the sports field and interact with the sports equipment and the sport coaches. Of course, this social grouping is massively superficial and I don't endorse it in any way. Be yourselves, guys. Don't listen to any label society tries to put on you. Anyway, hopefully you can see where I'm coming from. The entire high school ecosystem is all the interactions between the biotic factors, the students and the teachers, and the abiotic factors, the campus, the desks, textbooks, sports equipment, etc. This all creates a self-contained high school environment. To wrap things up, let's go over the definitions we've covered in the video. A habitat is the place where an organism normally lives. A population is all the organisms of one species that live in a particular habitat. A community refers to all the populations of different species living in the same place at the same time. An ecological niche is an organism's role within its environment and an ecosystem can be summed up as all the biotic and abiotic factors in a particular area. Overall, ecosystems are dynamic, which means they're always changing, and the way an ecosystem changes is determined by biotic and abiotic factors. Population sizes change, interactions between organisms change, and aspects of the physical environment change. Okay guys, I'll see you all later.